Hello and welcome back to the Leo Bria. It's been a while, but I really am excited for today's video, which is all about Septima Clark, the teacher of the US Civil Rights Movement. This video is actually inspired by Books by Lane's video on Malcolm X and that style of video. So definitely watch that. I'll link it so you can see it. Septima Clark was born in 1898 in Charleston, South Carolina. Her mother was born in Haiti and she learned how to read and write there. And her father was born enslaved on the Poinsett plantation in South Carolina. States and plantation banned people, black people from learning how to read and write while they're enslaved. They also created obstacles after the fact in terms of education, quality of life, when it came to receiving the right to vote, especially in the South, black people were forced to take literacy tests. They had to learn how to sign their names. They had to recite certain things and read certain things. So when it came to civil rights, Septima Clark figured the best way for black people to not only get the right to vote, but actually participate in society was to gain literacy. So that became her focus after teaching. She created and developed citizenship schools. The first was in Giant's Island, South Carolina. The first is, it's not just about what we think people need, but what people say they actually need. So what I really loved about Septima Clark is that she created these citizenship schools, but with the idea of people saying, the first citizenship school honestly wasn't even created until somebody requested it in John's Island. And then, in the school, people got to learn what they asked for, whether it was signing up for trying to fill out a Sears card, learning about banking, learning about who to contact in terms of if they needed something done. So while the initial creation involved literacy and gaining the right to vote and to pass the literacy test, the real goal is to, to create citizenship schools to help people become an active part of their societies and their communities. And by 1963, there were 1,000 community citizenship schools across the nation. The next thing is empowering people is leadership. So a lot of in the US, you'll see the Dr. King as the leader of the civil rights movement. There's always like one person or maybe three people at most who are considered the leaders of a movement or an organization, but that's actually impossible and unrealistic. There are a lot of people who are involved organizing in their communities, attending these, a lot of people attending these citizenship schools, for example, like Fannie Lou Hamer from Mississippi from a farm and going back to her community after she took these or she attended these citizenship schools. There's a lot of people that attended these citizenship schools and doing work on the ground, but there's many factors that lead to one or three people at most being the face of a movement, but Septima Clark did not rock like that. I really appreciate her focusing on empowerment is leadership, forcing Rosa Parks, who she worked with, to get, go, get out of her comfort zone. Just the idea that change in any community comes from listening, respecting people, and working together to create the change that we want to see. Number three is none of us win if we all don't win. And what is interesting about this, she said one of the faults of, the, one of the weaknesses of the civil rights movement is that the men just didn't respect the women and what they had to say. People like Dr. King, Ralph, Daber, Ralph David Abernathy, all the men in charge just didn't respect women. And you see this in not respecting their ideas, not valuing their contributions. Also kind of their idea of what success is. The way that I feel like this relates to today is making sure we're including queer people, trans people, all black people that encompasses not just middle-class people, people, not just people with college educations, including poor people, including people that have different appearances, zip codes, and education matters. And this relates to point two in letting people speak for themselves. So me not speaking over a black trans woman or a New York, very rich black woman or man, not speaking over someone who is living in a rural community and making sure we listen to what everyone has to say and including that in our fight for equality. So the, the fourth one really isn't a necessarily a, um, a specific approach to life, but the fourth one really is what am I fighting for? What am I trying to achieve by doing all the different things? Who am I working to free as I just post on YouTube and do all these different things? 
Septima Clark was arrested. She lost her job. She suffered two heart attacks while she was working in the civil rights movement. What she said is those who came to the citizenship schools had to feel that we could get away with it or that we didn't mind if we had to die. So Congress eventually passed the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which we know has been ruled back. And I live in Georgia where they're now restricting voting rights again. As I finished the book, it was for a story and I'll link the story be below, but as I finished the book, I thought to myself, who am I fighting for? Use my voice, use my privilege, use my power that I have to help free somebody else. And it's also something Toni Morrison said, it's like I have a duty to free somebody. So, those, so for those of us that do have time, what are we doing to help sure, make sure we don't regress? What are we doing to fight for the equality for everybody? So that's really my biggest, my last big takeaway is making sure that in everything I do to make sure that I am not, make sure that I am helping, making sure that I am contributing to the advancement of for the equality of people. And when I do it, whatever I do, I'll make sure I'm leading through empowerment and taking the non-directive approach in the same way that Septima Clark did throughout her life and through the civil rights movement. So thank you, thank you, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.